commercial construction coffee talk fans. Thanks for chiming in. My name's David Corson. and I'm your host. I'm also the publisher and editor of Commercial Construction Renovation Magazine. This is what it used to look like. This is uh, oh, uh, May 2021. Christian Brothers out of the big state of Texas down south. Anyway, great looking issue. Well, this was a 160 page issue. Lots of stuff. Uh, well, let's see what. It, oh, ooh. I always like looking where I, what I was doing back then. Uh, we were at our summit back in uh, the day at the uh, recording studio of Rich Hart in uh, Atlanta. I'm covering myself. I got my Georgia Swarm NLL jersey on. But uh, anyway, this was a great issue. Got a Christian Brothers uh, right down the street from me. So uh, we thank uh, Derek for grace in the cover. Thanks, Derek. And uh, anyway, but we're, we're digital now. Haven't uh, printed the magazine. Uh, went 100% uh, back in August of 21 when we had White Castle on our uh, the biggest restaurant that they had built on our cover, the VP of Construction, and uh, haven't looked back since. And uh, have uh, it's just been an amazing journey going from print face to face to becoming an official, you know, a, an official certified digital marketer. And uh, anyway, it's been a, it's been a wild ride over the last couple of years, and um, uh, just uh, all in all, uh, exciting. I learn something new every day. You know, you can teach an old dog new tricks, believe it or not. But uh, anyway, I uh, hope everybody's having a, so it's the holiday week. It's hump day today. You got the 4th of July weekend coming up. It's crazy. 4th of July on a Tuesday. Kind of just, it's a crazy thing. You could take this whole week off and then the following week and have almost a two-week vacation. It, 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 it's just the way that, you know, when it lands like in the middle of the week. It's kind of crazy. So I, I'm trying. I'm in production right now. I'm trying to get my issue ready to get out uh, post next week. And um, the uh, it, it, uh, it it it's just crazy trying to get people because you don't know if they're staying or if they took off, if they're going to come back or are they going to work on Monday. You know, uh, it's uh, I'll be I'm Bob proof and I'm working, so I got no choice. I got to get things done. So. Uh, but, uh, it's, uh, it's been a wild ride. It's the dog days of summer. I'll tell you right now, it is just beautiful here in Atlanta. The humidity still has not come. I mean, it's hot. It's to be 97 this weekend, but the humidity last night, we were out in the lake, no humidity, nice breeze. I mean, it, it's been absolutely beautiful, but I know the humidity's coming. My wife said, you know, it hasn't gotten hot yet. I'm like, don't jinx it. Come on. Okay. Cause the minute, cause it, God just flicks the switch and you'll wake up and you'll walk out and it's like, boom. It hits you, man. And it gets hot here in July and August, you know, and then in, in the fall, you got Indian summer coming in September, October. And, you know, it's just beautiful here in the South. So, but uh, today, sunny, not cloud in the sky. And, uh, you know, we're just hoping the humidity just stays off a little more, you know, uh, cutting the grass in 98 degrees and 98% humidity, no fun. I'd rather be in 110 dry heat out in Phoenix, you know, than in the humidity. So anyway, uh, hey, most of the sports are all done. NHL over, NBA over, everything's over. It's the, it's the it's the boys of summer, you know. And uh, you know, it's you know the Braves. I think they got a twelve or thirteen game winning streak going on. It's just unbelievable. And um, uh, you know, uh, all schools, the old schools are out. Everybody's getting ready for the holiday weekend and fireworks and all that stuff. So uh, hopefully, you're staying cool out there wherever you might be. Today, got a special guest. From the great city of uh, Chi Town or Chicago, Illinois. His name is Keith Lambert, and he's uh, the president of Oxidizers. And what he does is uh, that, you know, they they actually keep your air clean. You know, that's what they do. So, Keith, say hello from the great, great city of Chicago. Illinois. Hey, how's everybody doing today? Hey. I, uh, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate you letting me uh, come on the show and be able to chat a little bit about my crazy world and how it works out. And- and and compliments your world and uh and so, so i appreciate the opportunity to be able to come on today well but before key you know let's i always talk to the guests before we go live uh anyway uh we were talking about and Keith said yeah you know the canadian fire and the smoke and so forth the 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 wind has shifted and now chicago's getting what new york had a couple of weeks ago with the uh uh, with all the smoke and stuff. And uh, I was like, hey, you're an air guy. You, you need to do something. Because, oh, man, I don't think I got equipment that big, man, to handle all that. <laughs> you know? you know? But it, it's something to think about, you know. I'm sure Elon's thinking about it or whatever, you know. <laughs> Guys, uh, you know. But uh, anyway, Keith, we really appreciate you finding the time here, uh, you know, right before the holiday and, uh, you know, to tell your story and so forth. So here's actually how it works. We're going to do it in three parts. 
Uh, mm-hmm. Tell your story, where you grew up, your brother, sister, how you play any sports, you know, where you went to school, right. how you up, where you are today at Oxidizers. Right. And then we'll talk about the last three years lessons learned uh, that our listeners out there in commercial construction coffee talk might find of interest. And then uh, you'll leave one positive thought or phrase, your contact info, and then we'll close it out. So with that said, Great. the floor is yours. Tell us your story. All right. All right. So I'm a Jersey boy, born and raised in South Orange, mm-hmm. born in Livingston, New Jersey, raised in South Orange, yet I have no accent, as you can tell. So people always tell me when they meet me, they go, where are you from? And I say Jersey, and they go, no way, can't be. I'm like, yes, I don't have the accent. So I was born and raised in Jersey, uh, typical kid, you know, in baseball, played basketball, did a little bit of floor hockey until I actually sprained a wrist real bad, and then it was like, pulled out of that a little bit. But uh, grew up a regular kid, you know what I mean? A young young kid went to went to college for a year, year and a half. Let's just say wasn't focused as I should be. And uh, then I went into a program of all things for mechanical design. My dad introduced me to AutoCAD like at version two at home, and so I always had like a a, a, a tendency to be able to take things apart, put them together, things along those lines. So I ran to a program that was about a year and a half, and uh, it was all in mechanical design, things along those lines, drawing on the old drawing boards before CAD and then using CAD as well. So then I'm getting out of school, 20 years old. What am I going to do? Living in Jersey, okay. I had like three good offers that I was looking at. It was like one was a laser company. One was a uh, packaging company, you know, for like commercial packaging. And another one was environmental. And I said, well, you know what? Lasers, we'll see. Packaging, I personally was like, I don't know if I could muster, keep myself involved in that. And I was like, we'll see. And I was like, environmental is going to last. You know, I, don't, I knew nothing about it. All I knew is I knew I could design equipment. So I started working for a company. Uh, it was based in Jersey. Worked there for about three years. And then it got bought out. And they're like, we don't need your design team. And I was in the design team. Good luck. And I'm like, I'm not moving yeah, exactly. And I'm like, I'm not moving to Chicago anyway. So I'm like, whatever. I'm going to stay here in Jersey. Three months after, well, no, they, they let up, they let the design department go three days after I get the phone call. Uh, hey, Keith, this is uh, X company that just bought the uh, your group out. Um, um, would you be interested in coming out? And I go, no, nah, not really. But then I said, well, you know what? Let me draft up a contract. So I drafted up a contract. I'm 23 at this point. I said, look, you're going to fly me out. Every two weeks, you fly me back home. This is 93. Every two weeks, you fly me back home. Here's my rate per hour. You pay for my car. You pay for a townhouse for me to live in. And then I'll consider it. I'm thinking, no way. I'm like, no. All right, great. When can you come? That means I'm going. So, okay, fine. So be it. That's what pulled me here to the Midwest. Worked with that entity for quite a while. They got bought and sold by a couple other companies over the years. And again, because of my dad's entrepreneurial, I could say lessons, because he owned his own company and then ran other ones over 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 my whole lifetime, I was always thinking in my mind, well, maybe one day I'll have that opportunity. So I was there for a while. And then um, uh, one of my coworkers, works was working with one of our vendors who was doing large HVAC projects, uh, industrial work, they did commercial work, you name it. And he said, hey, you know what? They're looking for a design group to be able to build thermal oxidizers. What a thermal oxidizer is, is let's say you're uh, company T, uh, electric car company, right? So you make cars and you paint those cars. As you're painting those cars, all those fumes, you don't want to release into the atmosphere. So I'm the guy and we're the group that handles getting those process air streams, cleaning them up and re- releasing clean air you know, to the atmosphere. On average, quick point, we are in anywhere from 550 to 650 on average a year facilities. So we process and clean a little over 10 trillion cubic feet a year, every year that, that our, we're keeping care of the equipment, keeping them running, what have you. So as you can imagine, we get a lot of emergency problem. Hey, help me, help me there. So I'm at this other company and they're like, hey, let's start this division. So myself and three gentlemen, this is back in 2001. They're like, 
you're going to start a division for us. We're like, great. We're like, we're not getting an office. They're like, what do you mean you're not getting an office? We're like, we all live in the Chicago area. We can meet at a Starbucks that was between us, and we're not going to get an office. They thought we were insane. Oh, yeah. We we ran that company. In the total, we had about seven employees. And over our 13-year tenure, we did about $150, 155000000 million for the company. So they loved it. We had no overhead in their minds. They were like, no brick and mortar. You're doing all this stuff. It was great. Then we had a new CEO come in and that new CEO was looking for everything he could, let's just say all the blood he could get out because he was worrying about stock. That's all he cared about. Right. So be it. So, okay, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I jumped. I was like, I'm, I can't, I just didn't like the way the direction it was going. I said, it's time to, if anything, now's my time. I'm out on a, on a, on a, on a presentation with another entity that they were talking to a little bit. And the previous owner of that entity comes to me and he goes, Hey, we should have dinner. And I'm like, okay, let's go have dinner. We have go have dinner on his yacht. And we talk about stuff and where we are. And it's funny. He and I both laugh. He's, he's my business partner, uh, Warren Land. We laugh because we, we, we look like we both looked at each other like steak. It was like, this could work because he had built a very successful um, commercial and industrial HVAC company on the West coast. And we're in, I'm in the same model, but I was, of course, uh, for clean air purposes only. And so that's when we started oxidizing a little over 10 years ago. And uh, we have been able to year over year grow, 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 expand. We work in every industry that you can imagine, whether it's packaging, defense, you know, whether it's whether it's defense in, in the way of jets and or defensive boats, aerospace. When you go pick up a burrito and you pick up some stuff in the supermarket, we're the guys that work on those process lines, et cetera. When you get your chips, those chips in most cases have an oxidizer on the back end. We're there when you buy your car. And so we thankfully have been able to have a very good amount of saturation, you know, and it's all geared around clean air. You know, I mean, it's one right now, as you said, right now, you know, we have this Chicago smoke, Chicago, the Canadian smoke, you know, coming down. And I'm like, I'm like, here we go, you know, and, and it's one of those things that people will sit and go, okay, it's a moment. But I was seeing last night, they thought a little over 660 to 180 million tons of carbon are now being emitted into the atmosphere. This is a problem. This is something that we'll have to, again, it just adds to the issues that we have. And so that's pretty much my story. You know, like I said, we're, we're in facilities all over the, all over the U S all the time. And for us, it's always, it's a little two pronged, especially now, because we deal with the industrial. But then it's so funny because so many facilities now are starting to see that the the non industrial manufacturing side of companies, the offices, the commercial buildings, the 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 actual retailers. One of the things that I see that's got that's already emerging and is going to continue to emerge is continuous air monitoring of what's the facility like where my workers are working. And whether it's a construction site, I mean, we've done enough construction work and, you know, the average size of a, let's say, I have one client that's in ethanol. I'll give you an example. Uh, I have 32 systems that I was part of the design group and all that stuff. We sold to them back at my previous company. We sold a couple of them since here as well. This equipment is literally, you know, a small unit is the size of your house. Right. And so as you can imagine, safety when it comes to employee safety what is the air quality like what is the water quality like these are things that we're constantly seeing a little more awareness on you know and so that's why when i had the opportunity to talk to you in your show you know i look at it and i go whether it's commercial and okay what is the atmosphere like what you know what is it that the people are dealing with or industrial it's, it's just where things are going to continue to go you know i'm from philly and I still have my twang. So uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I went to, I, I got my prep school, my petty school uh, stick is behind me. So I went to, uh, you know, I, looked, ah. I was a four year boarder in Heightstown and uh, awesome. at a place in Margate, you know, down South Jersey, you know, right. people laughed. They're like, hey, you're not from New York. You're not from Boston. You know, you're, you, you know, where are you from? I'm like, I'm from right. Philly. We say water, W A D E R, you know? Yep, so, water, exactly. Yeah, exactly. so even my wife's like, it's water. It's not water. I'm like, well, that's the way I grew up and that's the way I say it. So 
Apparently, but, when I say radiator, my wife goes, radiator? <laughs> it's a radiator. Radiator. And I'm yeah. like, oh, is it or is this yeah. how I say it? I, I know it's me. <laughs> but but I've been down here in the South since 92, a Yankee living in the South. So I've actually lost my twang, but still people, mm -hmm. it's still there. And right. uh, so people, I laughed, you know, and we played Livingston, Livingston High School in lacrosse. So I've- I, Did I, you really? Oh, now, yeah. How, you know, how long did you play lacrosse? I still, I still play, you know, I mean, I'm- Dude, you know, I, I've always, I never ventured into it other than playing around with friends a little bit, but I have all, in fact, one of my- one of my nephews uh, got a full ride scholarship uh, a few years back. I love lacrosse. I, I, that's why when I saw the sticks, I was like, "Oh, that's awesome!" I well, just thought it was well, my or, my orange and yellow is University of Denver where I played, and then my blue and yellow is uh, where it was my petty stick. You know, those are those are relics in the back. You know, the awesome. No, I love them anymore. But uh, no, I'm a, I'm a good alum, and uh, it uh, yeah, you know it. Uh, I told my wife, I go, look, Gordy Howe, he's a hockey player, you know, a Hall of Famer. I said, look, uh, he played till he was 63. So as long as I can uh, go up and down the field, my, you know, I just won X amount of shifts and I both my ACLs replaced. And uh, so I'm like, you know, look, you know, my glory days are over. But as long as I can, you know, get a couple shifts, same thing with the ice, you know, if I, I'm not right. You know, right. I'm going to play until I can't do it anymore. And then so you uh, can't play anymore. That's but, awesome. you know, there's, listen, I'll, I'm, I'm actually, I'm turning 60 uh, on Thursday and. Uh, oh, congrats. Happy birthday. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm hitting the big six. Oh, and I still feel like I'm 26. At least my mind. thinks go. that My knees don't. There you go. That's but, what's uh, key. Yeah. Yeah. My, my, that's key. And uh, so it, uh, but, you know, there's guys that are older than me that play in the old guys league, you know, 70, 75, and they're still running around. And I'm like, yeah, you yeah. know, I'll, I'll do one. You know, I'll know when the times, you know, to, to hang them up, you know. But right, your uh, body, will, your body will make it clear when it's like, OK, now now is the time. Yeah. Until then, run. Yeah. That's, that's my motto on everything in life. Just run. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it uh, uh, but, you know, talking about, you know, the oxidizers and stuff the, and clean air, you know, listen if the air is not clean, it, it, it can, it, it, it's a bummer because it can, it can cause health issues. And, uh, so I totally get the, uh, the whole gig with, uh, you know, keeping the air clean and, you know, wellness in the facilities and, and right. all that stuff. And, uh, you know, it, it's important like here in the spring, we get pollen, like mm -hmm. severe amounts of pollen in April yes. and here in the South. So like, I just went up and, and pulled the air filter out of our AC unit. And, uh, you know, it was just, you, you can't imagine how much, and, and if you don't right. keep just a simple little thing like that, your filter, it, it, you know, if it's, if it's dirty or clogged up and it's got a bunch of debris in there, which you, you, you know, you, you'd be amazed at what's floating around in your air that, you know, not only can it inhibit the efficiency of the unit, it's also not good for you because you're just breathing. No, it's not. It's not. If you, if you look at the reports, it's really interesting. You know, PM 2.5, you know, particular matter 2.5, it's always people as PM 5, PM 5, PM 5. Now everyone's really starting to look and go, you know, PM 2.5, which means that we want to make sure we're filtering out smaller, smaller bits. It get Once you get something, you know, I, I, I was doing a couple um, uh uh, articles and help some people out, you know, with what with what's going on with these fires. And and the reality is, every toxin or inorganic material that we breathe in, it has an effect on your lungs, which then gets into your bloodstream, etc. And so, you know, it's easy to, for all of us, I think, to go, oh, it's just a little smoke, it'll be no big deal. But carcinogens are real, you know, and so we have to look at it and say, okay, what are we doing to be proactive about? You know, not crazy off the side, you know, where you're nuts, but you have to at least look at it and say, hey, what can be done? Yeah, my my, my family's in uh, construction. We've been in con recycling sustainability since 1888. It's like fifth generation. Awesome. And so anyway, awesome. so as a grandson, when I got my uh, driver's license at 16 in Philly, every, all the grandsons had to work in the scrapyard, you know, to earn their keep, just the mm -hmm. way it was brought up. I so love it. I was working on I-95 outside of Philly uh, on uh, this demolition project. And we were had to go in and knock down all the asbestos off all the pipes of this building that we were knocking down. So it's, you know, it's the middle of summer, just like it is now, you know. Yep. And uh, yep. I'm, I'm in my white suit, you know, I gloves, you know, and this crew comes in, this asbestos crew, and they're not wearing their mask. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, and I was like the water hose guy that that's that. that uh, right. To keep down all the asbestos, to keep all the dust down. Exactly. Yep, exactly. So, 
So I said, I said, yo, man, why aren't you wearing your mask? Oh, we don't wear any of those masks. <laughs> and there came his lung, you know. And I'm like, hey, exactly. the mask on. I got my gloves on. I don't care if I'm sweating, man. I, I don't want that, oh. my, you know. But that's the kind of stuff. To, I mean, that's a severe example. But still, just dirt in the air. It's just, uh, you know, whether you're cutting you the grass. You don't want it in you. You really don't. You're right. You really you don't, don't want you it know. in you, you know. And we like, didn't know. I mean, I look back. You know, when I started, you know, 30 years ago, when I started in the industry, I'd go in, we'd go into units. There was, no, we didn't have a CO monitor and, and a VOC monitor. It was like, crack the door open, let's go in and see what we find. Now we all look and we go, oh my gosh, thankfully I'm still alive. You know, because the safety standards have changed so much. But, you know, at the same time, I've literally had crews inside systems where everything's, you know, all lockout tag out is done. Everything is set. Customers like all's good. Get the crew in there. And we had one where they had a, a, a fermenter from a CO's two scrubber that they thought I had all the dampers closed. Next thing you know, everybody's gasping for air and looking for a way to get out to breathe. You know, I mean, that that, that could have been an absolute tragedy. So it, it's real. We have to just do our best to be smart with it, you know. So, so, so let's talk about, uh, you know, the last three years, uh, you know. The shutdown happened, you know, no one knew it was going to go on. Now we're here three years later, you know, we're basically opened up, but it's still that lingering, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it, still hanging out there. Yeah. So talk about some of the lessons that you learned over the last three years, you know, and, right. and you know, and, uh, you know, maybe any new, you know, new products that you've coming out with or you see coming down the pike, you know. Yeah, I'm, uh, these last three years for us, they were years of continued growth because I, you know, one thing that I, I learned early on is, is as a company, you have to always be ready to pivot. You know, my, my people, they all know, I always talk about it. You know, when someone calls you and they're in a dire straits and they're having problems, you need to be the voice of calm, you know? So when, when, when all this happened, you know, first thing, first thing for us is we start getting the letters. Department of Defense, you will stay open. <laughs> you will service equipment. We started getting flooded with these letters. And I'm like, yes, we, we, you know, we're getting all the correspondence back. We will still service your equipment. We will still be out because some of my, some, some companies in my industry just shut down. They were like, we're not sending people out. We're not going. No one's going to go. And we're like, okay, we understand that. But at the same time, if a facility can't run, you have whole shifts of people that that affects. It's not just, oh, the product's down, but it's like, hey, the facility's down. People aren't bringing home money. They're not, they're not being able to feed their families. So we had to do a lot of pivoting. We did a lot of pivoting. Like suddenly it was like, guys, gals, don't worry about trying to fly because all the flights were, you know, were gone. So we're like, okay, rental cars and RVs. And people were like, what? And we're like, hey, in this time, you can either, you know, hotels weren't even servicing them for a while. And when you did, nobody was there. And so we offered our people, we said, look, you can have an RV. You take an RV to the job site. We let the customer know, look, they're going to go out totally isolated from your staff. You, they'll they'll di diagnose, deal with the issue, stay in an RV so they have to deal with more interaction and go from there. Some chose to do that. Some chose, hey, I'll, I'm good. I'm going to I'll drive out, but I'll, you know, I'll, uh, I'll mask up and I'll, you know, do a, you know, do a hotel. And so we, that was one of the first things that we did. And we saw that by staying open and working through the situation, it only opened up more doors because people were like, wow, you know, the OEM, you know, the original equipment manufacturer wasn't answering, but you guys answered. And we're like, well, that's what we're supposed to be doing. We're a service company. And so that was probably the, one of the biggest sort of eye opening uh, lessons for us is, okay, when you're hit with those circumstances, what do you do to change? You know, what do you do to still work and continue to work around it? You know, if that if that makes sense, that was that was definitely one of the things that, that we saw and we were like, wow, this is this is an opportunity, not a a time to to you know to shrink back, you know, that type of thing. You know, doing the RV, I've had a lot of people on the show. And uh, you know, I always ask, you know, what people did over the you know, over that time and you know, I mean, no one knew they were just kind of winging it. And right. uh, but having the RV, that's actually what that that was a really good did you come up with that idea? Yeah. 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 So that, yeah. that, that, that's actually was a, you know, most construction companies, 
they just went on their their business you know they 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 masked up they got on the plane they you know they flew they went on the thing and depending on what state you were in depending on what the regulations were that really determined how well your project was going to go like here in georgia yeah. you know we were we were like one of the first states that opened up and uh there were three construction projects that were going down you know that were being built they were all essential there was a, lo a long-term care i think there was a uh fire station they were building i forget what the other but anyway mm -hmm. i watched them all get built but they were out there you know you could see the protocols that were happening uh, right but i don't think i saw any rvs on there i mean i saw yeah. some well it's funny as you say that actually it came about with a conversation with my my business development manager and one of my technicians and we were all just running around what do we what do we do and as like it's funny as i think about it i'm like it was from one of the Maybe from Tony, but, but nevertheless, it was one of those. Literally, we're all just sitting there going, and we do this a lot. Where it's Epiphany. Like, okay, what do we do? What do we do? What makes sense? And then it's like you know, we all just throw stuff out, and and it, it, but it worked. You know, it gave us options to say, okay, what do we do? Because when you're essential, you're essential. It's like okay, no, I, I I need to be there. I need to do this. So I get you. I mean, we had a lot of facilities that we went to where literally they were like, we're not coming out. You guys do your thing. You know, we'd have to test when you got there, go through, do your work, test when you leave. I mean, it was uh, it was a gong, you know, but uh, oh, yeah. we made it well, through, you know. Yeah, no, no doubt. Uh, you know, like I said, that that ha the the scrubbers, the oxidizers, you know, they're all they're all air cleaners in my in my, you know, being in general in general, mm -hmm. in general sense. But with the 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 shutdown and uh, well, I'll roller coaster, call it what you want, but everybody came more cognizant of, ooh, clean air. We really need it. You know, how do we get right. it efficiently? Efficiently, and would this be an asset to our facility? Uh, you then, then you can, it, you know, morphs into hey, wellness and all these other things that people probably mm -hmm. didn't think about. I mean, look, I grew up where there were no so seat belts. People smoke cigarettes, and they put baby same oil. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Smoke. It wasn't secondhand smoke. It was just smoke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So oh, I, <laughs> you know, I didn't wear a, didn't wear a helmet when I was riding my bike. You know, I doing evil can and uh, you know, I got all the stitches to to, to show it. So all the exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, but then you look today. You know, you got all these things and scrubbers and this and that. And uh, but like I said, it's uh, you know, it's a it's a pertinent. Like my son, he's in Boeing in Charleston. I'm sure that they've got a scrubber on their on their on their paint booths for the 787s, and yeah, you know, they I'm do. sure, I'm have sure a they have scrubber and oxidizer something along those lines. Because oh, yeah. if they didn't, again, you know, it, it's so funny. I'm, I kid you not. I think about this all the time. You know, it's like the industrial revolution was a revolution, and with that came a lot of things that we just didn't know. And so then, as you ramp up and build up and ramp up and build up, we still to this day, I cannot disclose who, when, or where, there are still sites that have oxidizers on them where they have electrodes in the ground. They're charging the ground to release toxins. These are old ammunition sites, old military sites. And, but back in the 30s and 40s and 50s, nobody knew. You know, So you have all these super sites that most people don't even know super site. What does that mean? It means somebody like me and a whole bunch of, uh, of other smart people are cleaning up 10, 20, 30, 40 years of, of damage. And so, like you said, we just didn't know, you know, I look and I go, okay, now we know, you know, we all realize number one, whether you like it or not, I always say this for one planet, there is, there is no us and them when it comes to the environment, because I mean, look what's happening. I'm here in Chicago and they're telling me not to go outside because of Canada. <laughs> so you go, I can get mad at it or I can realize, wait, whether I like it or not, it's just one world. You know? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I saw it when I was in China. I brought my um, my son. Um, he actually, I brought him there when he was in kindergarten. He's now 14, about to go into high school. And we had put him in a um, public school. We put him through a program that is uh, Chinese immersion. So all through his schooling. Half his day has been in, in Mandarin, talking, writing, all that stuff, and the other half in English. So we were like, oh, this will be a good thing. I'll never forget. We landed. I brought me and my wife for the first time. They'd never been to to uh, to Shanghai. And we land. We cut in. And I kid you not, they happen to have a swarf similar to this from Beijing, where most of the manufacturing is. And my wife was sick the first three days. You know, and, and, it's, and it's one of the realities of 
guys, we can't control the wind. We can't control where and how things go. What we can control is how we decide to process it. You know, so mm-hmm. hey, uh, listen. I I remember when I was uh, look. I went to University of Denver, and uh, they and during the winter they'd have the inversion where yep. you know, you'd see the smog and it would clog everything down, and you know the air quality. You think you know Colorado, beautiful state, you know the mountains and all that, mm-hmm. but right there in the foothills of the Rockies, where Denver is, the Mile High City, that uh, during the winter you could see that, that pocket. Shit. Well, yep. it, yeah, I don't care if it's L.A. and you, you can see that pocket. It's just you, you know. Can. You know but if yeah. you know there, there there is opportunity to clean all that and and i think you know even though uh uh there are some there are some people that that are polluters i think the us has done a pretty good job in cleaning stuff up i mean oh my gosh yes i mean from where I'm it was you, to where it is today i it, am telling you you know let me put it this way um the different places that i've been able i've been i've been able to experience in the world some are still back to where we were in the seventies and they're still not even close. So we have, I agree. We've done a great part of our part and more of, Hey, regulations, title five. I mean, I had a client literally yesterday called up very large, uh, industrial paper, let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, we're testing the unit. We're only getting 87% destruction efficiency and we need to get 90. What do we do? Because they're going to shut us down tomorrow. Go back and forth on a couple phone calls with them back and forth. This morning, we find out they hit 93. We're good. We're going. We're meeting our numbers. But but this is, you know, that's the burden that we really have. And, you know, you can sit and go, okay, it's a burden, but it's a burden that in the end, I look at it and go, it's for my child and it's for my neighbor's child and my neighbor's grandchild and all that stuff. So we give them something that they can work with, you know? And so I think we've done a great job at really being intentional. Could we do better? Sure. We all can do better. We, we, all of us individually can do better, but I sit and I go, we have done a great job, you know? Mm -hmm. No, no, I listen. I totally agree. It, uh, uh, from where, where I looked, where we are today i mean just like just with like i live right below the lake here so uh you know would i eat anything out of lake linear probably not but uh <laughs> you know but it's still the water's you know pretty freaking clean i remember growing up in the city of manhattan you know the east river the hudson river i mean they used to be really dirty and you know, much cleaner now people swim in be there. horrible yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, or in philly you know like your jersey guys schuylkill river you know i mean yeah uh, they yep. row in there i don't know if i'd swim in there but you know it, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you this know. is getting better you know like, <laughs> it's not too bad you know, lake michigan you're in chicago you know hey yep. you know, it uh yeah. yeah so i i listen i i you know i'm I, i'm kind of an environmentalist but I'm, I'm i'm not crazy about it you know i recycle i try to do my part uh and uh you know whatever we're trying to do you know it, it, you know you try to do as much as you can but i'm only one person i'm not that's right I'm one of 8 billion people on the planet. So, exactly. but if we all did it, you know, it, it would be that much cleaner, you know? So, well, you know, I, this is how I look at it. You know, um, you know, everyone talks carbon footprint, carbon footprint, what's your carbon footprint, all that kind of stuff. I look at it and go, yeah, yeah. it's the fingerprints. You yeah. know what I mean? It's the small little things that doesn't mean you have to be, you know, a tree hugger and all that, you know, stuff people say, but it just says, hey, let me just be a little intentional and think a little more about, you know, I always just think about what I'm going to be handing my son. You know, I look at I look at the people I get to work with and what, I mean, I'm just the organizer. You know what I mean? I look and I go, the guys and gals that I'll send to a site when they're down and they're going, we don't know if we can get that next shift or two shifts in. How do we get this unit back up and running? They're the people that save the day because they're keeping the economy going. You know, they're keeping things going. So I look at it, it's, it's just a combination, you know, of us having those little carbon fingerprints where you say, oh, I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't need to make that waste. I don't need to, you know, that, you know, recycling, you sit and you go, hey, it's a very, it's, yeah, it's all good things as long as we think that way, you know. When you, when you, uh, when you look back, you know, over, uh, you know, over these years and, 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 you know, as, you know, as we're coming out of it, you know, if there was a uh, one positive thought or phrase that you'd want to, uh, uh, you know, leave with the audience out there in commercial construction coffee talk, what would it be? Oh man. You know, as we um, enter the second half of 2023, Q3 and Q4 and, uh, right. I, I, I probably, this, this may sound a little crazy, 
but I'd probably say going into the second half of 2023, look out for your neighbor. Oh, cool. You know what I mean? And really, I really would. Cause I look and I go, we have so much good and great things that people do. And we do. And I sit and I go, if we could appreciate and help spur each other on in whatever avenues they are, what more could you ask for? Hey, uh, we, we sold our house and uh, we bought a little home. That we have a piece of land up on the lake that we're about to break ground on and uh, for our empty nester house. And uh, my neighbor, he's a, he's a retired uh, New Jersey fireman. And, oh, nice. Uh, you know, so, you know, like when his garbage cans are out there and, you know, he – he drives the local uh, he, to keep himself busy. He drives the uh, local school bus. He's like actually the nice. driver of all the school buses for the local high school. That's awesome. That's awesome. But anyway, like if I go out and I see the track, you know, trash day, trash day is Monday. So it was just here. So if I see his cans out there, I'll wheel his cans and I'll push him back because I don't want him left him yeah. out. You know, or he'll yeah. do the same thing or exactly. what. Exactly. You know, exactly. so I'm, I'm, in, I mean, listen, you know, everybody can use a little hand here and there and it's all exactly. the things that you, you don't notice that, and I'm not looking for any accolades. Uh, right. Uh, uh, you You're know, doing it because you were raised that that was the right thing to do. Yeah, exactly. You know, you know and I'm like, if we can across... do that. Sorry, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, no, 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 no. Look. So it, uh, so uh, I totally agree with, uh, you know, you know, help your neighbor and, uh, you know, be friendly and, uh, you know, it's just this. It and and listen, we're we're social. We're animals. We're social. We're social we beings. You might as well. We're meant to be. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Might as well be sitting in a pocket away from everybody else. It's like, no, it's not us. Yeah, no, I totally agree. You know, oh, it, 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 if someone wanted to, uh, you know, talk oxidizers or clean air or maybe how their, uh, you know, facilities become could become more uh, environmentally friendly or whatever, how would someone reach out to you? Uh, well, we have a website, www.oxidizers.net. Uh, and then, of course, you know, we have email and info, all, you know, info at oxidizers.net. We'll get a lot. In fact, it's interesting. We'll get inquiries from employees and people saying, hey, this is what we see here, you know, just to get a, a third party view, you know. So, yeah, www.oxidizers.net. And uh, we're always here to help. And and listen, oxidizers doesn't it, you know you do big, large, mean you do all sorts of sizes of facilities that you know, this you know we do. units will get on there. So it you know don't yeah. think that uh, you know if you're looking to improve your facility and you know make your your office space uh, more cleanliness, air quality, exactly. You know you, you have nothing to lose, and, and you know listen if you're trying to get people back to the office, like I know a lot of people are right now. And, uh, you know, you're still hybrid in, you know, your operations. This is one of the things you can say, hey, man, the office is safe. You know, we, 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 right. we the investment. So, right. You know, on that, I got I got to drop this. This, this is just great. You mentioned that, you know, one of my partners that we partnered with a company, um, we had a show just a few weeks ago. It's called the Fuel Ethanol Workshop. Big show. All the ethanol producers are there, all that kind of stuff. And it was funny, through one of our partners, we gave a high industrial HEPA filter away. So we're like, hey, we're giving this away. It's so funny. The, the winner, I, I've known him for years, and he happened to be, be the guy who won it. And he's, he runs a facility, an ethanol facility. And I'm like, hey, you want this? That's great. You know, and all that kind of stuff. And he goes, he goes, yeah, I put it in. He goes, it's amazing because you don't even realize the air quality that you breathe in every day you know and so that's what it's funny you mentioned that because that's one of the offerings where we're doing the industrial side but now hey you have a commercial location a residential location we can you know we can help you out to where what are the employees breathing you know so uh it's funny you mentioned that because we just did that like i said just two weeks ago we gave this big you know honking you know thing and he's like it's wonderful and i'm like if it can I, I work in some dirty places and smelly places. <laughs> it's one of those. If you're happy, I'm good. You know. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It, well, look. I mean, competition's fierce. So you know, it, you know, with labor, the labor market the way it is, and getting people to uh, you know move or, or make the switch to another mm -hmm. firm. If you have another, you know, bullet in your holster that you can actually you know, tool or call it whatever you want, an asset yep. that you can yep. offer someone. To, to make the jump, this is just another opportunity. And it's an investment in your people. It's an investment in your, you know, the environment and all those things. So I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you. You know, it's, uh, um, 
like I said, I do my part. I'm not uh, I'm not a tree hugger either, but there are things that that I do that you know that you know. I'm, like I said, I'm a recycler. You know, it, right, uh, right. You right. know, it makes an impact. I mean, you, it's in your family. It's in your blood. You know, well, that, like I always, I've, I've said, I know, I know some of you out there on commercial construction coffee talk have heard me say this before. You know, but uh, my family was doing sustainability before sustainability was even a word. That's okay? awesome. We were just That's junk awesome. guys cutting up steel and whatever, you know, but now we've, yeah. more, you know, so it, uh, you know, I kind of, you know, maybe I, maybe it was mold, molded in me when I was growing up, you know, <laughs> just like, you know, taking, you know, putting the flag up and taking it down every day and folding it correctly, you know, so, yep. you know, yep. all of those, all of those kind of things. Um, exactly. Listen, if anybody, if anybody wants to reach me, you can get me at David C at ccr-mag.com. Love to hear from you uh listen uh you know we had millions of people hit the website hit them every every month and um uh we we look at everything so send me something could be an anniversary could be a new product on oxidizers uh uh you know a charity whatever we look at everything i will find it's tough getting in the magazine but we will find something and i always take a couple of days you know and i I, mailboxes it's a it's a conveyor belt every morning i wake up it's full again so but i look at everything and i'll post it i share the link with you it's good for both of our seos it's a win-win so send me something and i it's like playing the lottery if you don't buy a ticket you can't win that's right (laughs) so if you don't send me something i can't help you promote it and believe me we're a conduit conduit of news we're a destination site so people just don't come to my site oh it looks pretty you know they're there for a reason so you might as well put something out there to uh you know show those guys you know hey what the heck is an oxidizer maybe i should go find out so uh no but uh yeah so it, it like I said, you know, you and I are, you know, hey, Jersey boy, you got no, you, you still have that little twang in there, you know, you're not from bit. Boston, you're not from Philly, you know, you, you're not from New York, you, you know, you're from Jersey, you got that thing there, you know, I hate to tell you, you still yeah. got it, you know. I know it's somewhat there right now, man. I know, I know. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, um, any final words before you sign off from sh- Chicago? Uh, I'd say, um, I appreciate you taking the time. You know, it's like we need as many positive voices that we can have. And I think what you're doing is spectacular because you're getting a cross cut of the country and people. I sit and I go, honestly, the accolades is to you. And I say, thank you. Oh, no, listen, I'm just uh, I'm just a little publisher down here, you know, hanging out and, uh, you know, laughing. And, uh, you know, like I said before, before, you know, I bought all the equipment. I had my mics and all this. I was going to do these things. You know, here I am. And and uh uh, yeah, you know, it, uh, it's, I laugh when I look at, you know, when you, you look at one of your original projects, like you said, and then you go and right. forward. I'm looking at myself and some of my videos when I did in the beginning, I was horrible. I didn't know what the heck I was doing, but I was just winging. I was like, okay, I'll make my mistakes. Listen, if hey. you're not mistakes, you're not learning. So That's right. you got to pick That's up, right. you know, so, uh, you know, here, I mean, I have over 500 videos on my, on my channel. So once again, if you're out there, hit the thumbs up. Got to make sure YouTube algorithms, you know, we want to make sure that uh, people find this uh, episode out there. So do me a favor and hit the thumbs up and, you know, make a nice comment and, you know, whatever. But, um, you know, I've got over 500 videos on our channel and it goes all the way back to all the events that we did and all this stuff. And uh, it, uh, it, you know, it was fun, but I really didn't, you know, and then, then, you know, the, the roller coaster just, you know, hampered everything. And now. You know, here I am and uh, technology, we're doing Zoom, you don't have to yeah. travel, you pick where you're going to go and uh, uh, you can't, you can't replace in person, but technology can definitely help you get the word out as yeah. well as me to, you know, people, you know, from all, all halfway across the world, you know, it, it, it might be, you know, so it's an amazing yeah. thing what's going on in the country and uh, uh, there's a lot of really cool products, not only in, you know, an HVAC or whatever. Did you, were you at the HVAC show here in Atlanta? In January? No, I was not. I heard it was a great turnout. Oh, oh, oh my God. I had not walked. <sighs> I hadn't walked to any shows for like two or three years. Okay. Oh, I know. Same here. It's like you miss so, it. So it was in Atlanta. So I told my wife, hey, look, I got to go down there. So I went down there. I had never seen that show that packed in my that's, life. That, that's what we're seeing as well. And I'm so happy that life is back. You know what I mean? People are getting out. They're talking. 
it's we're not made to sit around. It, 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 we're just not made to sit around and be in bubbles where we have to interact. That's awesome. Well, well, I told my wife it was in January here, and um, I, I was walking up and like, there must be something else going on at the Georgia Royal Congress Center because there can't be that many people here. I've walked the show a million times. I, I know. right, right. And I told her I'll, I'll, I'll be there for like three or four hours. I was there till till it closed. I was there all day. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, I man, there's it. a whole nother hall. And I saw I it was like eighty thousand people at that thing. I don't even know, but I mean, I, I'm telling you, it was the busiest show that I walked all year, and um, uh, but it was amazing to see all of these HVAC guys out there. And listen, if you've never been to the HR, you know, if you want to know anything about HVAC or air cleanliness, the AHR show is, it's got it all. And they got, they got all the big boys are there and they got the big chillers and boiler and Mm -hmm. all of it. (laughs) <laughs> yeah all of it sensors you, you can go down the list and, and listen i go up down every aisle so i walked the whole i don't even know how many steps i did that day but uh, <laughs> yeah but You're i was feeling clean I, I was clean you know <laughs> so uh well key love it. pleasure speaking with you uh Thank enjoy you. the fourth and uh you, too. you know stay safe from the uh you know the uh the bad air from o canada you know coming <laughs> the, uh, border. and uh we're doing our best yeah uh, so say goodbye from chicago all right chicago signing off thank you guys and i'm gonna sign off uh from uh sugar hill just below the buford dam on lake lanier all about uh, 25 30 miles out of uh downtown atlanta so uh, all of you out there, you know, even though it's hump day today, listen, if you're on a construction site, we want you to be safe. We want you yes. to get home at night. So make sure, you know, you, you know, you're on your toes and, uh, most of all the heat's coming <clears throat> or if it's already here, uh, make sure you drink lots of water or stay hydrated. And, uh, cause hydration is just the worst. It gives you headaches and all that stuff. So, you know, yeah. stay safe, drink lots of water out there and stay hydrated. Keith, pleasure meeting you. I look forward pleasure. to seeing, you know, listen, I'll come up. I'm not going to fist pump. I'll shake your hand and, uh, and uh, we'll meet in person and um, you know, we'll go from there. Love shy town. Uh, Gene, what's it? Gene. Anytime, Georgia. man. Anytime. Gene and Georgetti's. That's one of my favorite steakhouses in there. I forget. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You got to get some deep dish, brother. Rich Versace. These are Giordano's. I know. I know. No, no. <laughs> I, I, shoot, man. We've done enough events up there. You know, I've got some good buds up in uh shy town and uh, been to Wrigley, been to the white Sox. you know, yep. so, field uh tons of shows in mccormick you know i take the blue line down from the airport yeah yeah i'm a real guy get on the subway you know so it uh it, you know it. yeah now love chicago man what an awesome town so uh anytime, anyway man. anytime everybody have a great rest of the week enjoy the weekend happy fourth of july if you're shooting fireworks off make sure you stay safe there too don't lose any of your fingers and yes. uh, uh keith pleasure I will meet you in person down the road. And everybody out there in Commercial Construction Coffee Talk, we will see you next time on another episode. Keith, you're the man. I appreciate it, right? I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. We'll see you all next time. Thanks.